Good afternoon. This is Pastor Steve Ensley from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And we're here today after Easter as we continue in our midweek devotion series. It's a sunny day here in Louisville. And uh, the temperatures are supposed to get up into the mid-60s today. It's going to be a, a nice day. And uh, it's a good day to be in God's company and in God's favor as we rest in the glow of, of his resurrection, Jesus' resurrection on Sunday. So let's begin with a word of prayer. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Savior. We confess to you all the ways in which we dismiss your resurrection news. We are slow of heart to believe. We turn from others and retreat in fear. Lord, come into our locked rooms and breathe into us your forgiving spirit. Reawaken our trust and strength. Strengthen our hope that we may be witnesses to your saving power. And by your spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading I'd like to share with you today is the first assigned reading for this Sunday, the second uh, Sunday of Easter, from Acts, the fifth chapter. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. And as a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. <coughs> Excuse me. Here is the reading. That must have really been something to see that the people of Jerusalem and the people from the surrounding towns carried their sick, carried those who were affected by evil spirits into Jerusalem and, and set them by the side of the roads just so Peter's shadow might fall on them when he walked by. They wanted healing. They wanted miracles, and they were confident that Peter could give them some. And I imagine that was probably enough to give just about any one of us a swelled head. That is anyone but Peter, I would imagine, because Peter now had this kind of protection against ego trips. You see, I doubt that Peter could ever forget what had happened just a couple of weeks ago when Jesus was on trial for his life. Peter was so scared that he denied Jesus. He even cursed Jesus and swear, swore that he didn't know him. Just as Jesus had told him he would do. And then Peter, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And Peter broke down. He wept. He started crying. He fell to his knees. I'm sure that was a fall that he would never forget. But 
then again, he couldn't forget Jesus' love either. Because after Jesus rose from the dead, practically the first thing he did was go to Peter for a private conversation. That's recorded in the 24th chapter of Luke. The contents of that conversation, however, aren't recorded. We can only guess what might have went on. But afterward, we see a different Peter, a Peter behaving like a man with a changed heart, a man struck with love and faithfulness. You see, Jesus had forgiven him and restored his place of service as an apostle. And Peter then carried out that mission as faithfully as he could because he knew where the real honor, he knew where the real glory belonged. It belonged with Jesus, the one who saved us, the one who heals us. We too sometimes face temptations to take credit for God's work. Maybe someone praises us for something we very well know is God's doing, even if he used us to help carry it out. And Satan tempts us to take the credit, to believe as if we had done it ourselves from start to finish, to bask in the spotlight, to say mock humble things just to keep the praise coming for a little bit longer. What can protect us against this? Well, only Jesus. Because Jesus knows what to do with glory. The same thing he did with it throughout his whole entire ministry. He gave it to his Father. He gave it to God. And the Holy Spirit living within us can help us to do the very same thing. If we need our egos punctured, punctured he can remind us of our weaknesses. But far more importantly, he reminds us of Jesus' love. He reminds us of the incredible warmth and compassion that Jesus showed to us when he laid down his life to save us, to restore us, to make us God's own children once more. And if we know we're loved like that, how can anyone need an ego boost? Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to rejoice in your love and to pass along the glory to the one it belongs to, you and only you. In Jesus' name, amen. The song I've chosen for today is one from the old blue hymnal, one we don't hear much anymore. It's called Rejoice, the Lord is King, and many of us will remember it well. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King above. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Our Savior Jesus reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Psalm 118 is a psalm of thanksgiving for deliverance from enemies. I'd like to share with you verses 14 through 29 today. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. 
The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We praise you, Lord. Prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Form a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Let's join together now in Luther's evening prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, that you have protected me by your grace. Forgive, I pray, all my sins and the evil I have done. Protect me by your grace tonight. I put myself in your care, body and soul, and all that I have. Let your holy angels be with me, so that the evil enemy will not gain power over me. Amen. In the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Thank you for taking time to be with us today for our midweek devotion. And I look forward to seeing you again on Sunday, either here in the sanctuary or right here on Facebook online. God bless you and God bless your week. Good day.